Hi, I'm David Harrington. We're here with another Turks with Tips and Tricks. Today we're going to be talking about how to use a reciprocating saw. So today we're going to be looking at all the features of a reciprocating saw, all the different uses, the different blades, a little bit of saw safety, and some of the different things you can use a reciprocating saw for. So let's get into it. So this is a Bosch corded reciprocating saw. Corded is going to be good if you're using the saw, you know, all day, a lot of uses in one day. Cordless will be good for lower use, but they are going to last a long time as well. A reciprocating saw is going to have kind of a pistol grip like this with a trigger. It's also going to have a trigger lock, which you can put in place to uh, hold the trigger by itself. If you're using the saw for a long period of time and you want to hold it at a weird angle where you can't hold the trigger and then it will release just by pulling the trigger again. So most modern uh, reciprocating saws are gonna have some form of, of a quick release for the blade. Older ones might have an Allen key, a set screw or something like that. So how this Bosch model works is you turn this, put the blade in like this, release it and the blade will be in place. The same to remove the blade, you turn it, pull the blade out. And you always want to, uh, once you put the blade in, before you use the saw, just give the blade a pull to make sure it is actually set in place. And the other kind of main part of a reciprocating saw is going to be the shoe here, or the foot, or the backing plate, whatever you might want to call it. That's what you're going to rest your material against, especially when you're starting your cut. This, uh, this will pivot back and forth depending on how you're holding the saw. And that's uh, a very important piece of the saw to be in good condition and to function properly. So generally speaking, there's going to be about three different types of reciprocating saw blades. There are others for more specific uses. But for the most part, you've got these ones to look at. You've got a wood blade that's going to work with wood. It's going to be too not of a rough cut. It's going to work with embedded nails and screws in the wood. And it's going to have about a, a teeth per inch count of about five to seven. That means how many teeth there are in every inch. Uh, if you're cutting metal like plumbing or you want a nice fine cut on actually plastic or like I-beams that are metal, things like that, you're gonna use a metal blade like this. It's gonna have maybe eight to nine teeth per inch. And then you've got a much coarser blade like this. This is gonna be like an outdoor pruning blade or really rough cuts on wood. And it's got about three teeth per inch. So when you're using a reciprocating saw, you always wanna have two hands on the saw. One on the grip here and one on the grip at the front. And also remember, you always wanna wear safety protection, eye protection, possibly ear protection when you're using a reciprocating saw. So remember earlier I talked about the shoe or the uh, the base plate here. When you're starting your cut, you want to have that against the material that you're cutting. Otherwise, it's going to tend to bounce the saw back and forth like this. So you want to have the, the shoe right against the material and kind of start slow and then you can speed up the cut. And always remember to make sure the blade comes to a stop before you set the, the saw down or you can damage the blade. Another good feature of a reciprocating saw is you can actually put the blade in what would be upside down and then you can flip the saw over and you can uh, do what is called a plunge cut where you can rest the shoe on a material upside down and actually plunge into the material from the flat surface like if you didn't want to cut straight from the end. And if you're doing renos around the house or a demolition kind of pre-reno, a reciprocating saw is definitely going to be a go-to tool for that. And if you happen to be doing any renos or anything like that, consider a project coach through builditbetter.ca. That's build-it-better.ca. With Build It Better, you'll get a free project coach, uh, access to all industry pros, reduced shipping, and a lot of great monthly deals. And remember guys, the more you build, the better you get.